Welcome back, friends, to the shop. Behold the culmination of my labors. So I've got everything ready for the big Wobder ride. Again, if you're just joining us, we're doing a dirt bike ride from um, all the way across Washington State, almost 600 miles in four, four or five days. And everything here has got to fit on the bike. So I broke it into five categories, and we'll go category by category. Gadgets and gear, bike stuff, camping and food, clothing, and personal gear. So let's start with... Gadgets. All right, before we start, I got to get give credit to whoever whoever it is that put up the Wobder Reddit site. Uh, a lot of this stuff uh, was is from that. Uh, it was such a great list. I, I couldn't improve upon it. I mean, I've made my own changes a little bit, but for, by and large, it's pretty well intact. Okay, so let's start from the top here. So I, I want to weigh, I was thinking about being able to recharge my phone and camera because I will be documenting this, so I need to recharge batteries. And relying upon outlets uh, for, uh, you know, from kind people in restaurants just probably is not going to work for me. So I am going to bring this solar panel. Uh, I've used this one a lot, and this has been a really good one. Uh, what I like about it is it came with a cable uh, that you can charge three things at one time. So you have a USB-C, you have a regular USB mini, and you have an iPhone charger right there. So I can literally fold this open, and I put little carabiners on the back so I can hang it on the back of my pack if I had to open, or on a tree or whatever. So that will charge phone and the battery back up at the same time. Uh, I, these triple cable deals are really nice. This is Flexlar, if you're interested. Um, of course, here is the 8,000 milliamp hour uh, little external battery. This has charges USB 3 or 2 USBs right there. Uh, so I can charge my phone uh, with that as well. ACR, uh, this is um, a service that you, well, not a service, you buy these and you register it with, with like NOAA. If you push that, uh, they'll send search and rescue anywhere in the world. Um, it's a professional grade ACR. I'm also going to wear, wear a compass. Um, I'll wear this on a watch band. Speaking of watches, I, I was going to ask, and if you see things here that you think are not necessary that I could cut out and get rid of or replace with something better, please let me know in the comments. Um, I can't decide on the watch. If I'm going to wear the Explorer or if I should wear the Tuna. Either one, I'll put the Suuntu uh, compass on there. I like to have um, an oil compass. I don't always trust the GPS stuff. A little adapter uh, for if I do go into a restaurant, take advantage of that. I can plug in there. Uh, the paper map, of course, always. This is a, a map I put out for the ride, so it has very detailed leg-by-leg -leg information. Um, I don't trust GPSs completely, even though I have two of them. It's nice to have a paper backup, right? Only makes sense. Personal papers, passports, since we're going to be, hopefully, going into Canada, we'll need that. Um, I'll have my forest passes in here, registration, insurance information, contact information in that. Uh, right in the rain with Fisher Space Pen and a Sharpie, silver. I like the silver because it seems like everything I own is black, and the silver Sharpie writes on black, or the black one, you can't really see it. For camera equipment, what I'm going to be taking to document this is a uh, just a little Manfrotto uh, small tripod. This is about the most versatile one that I've found with a shoulder pod mount and I hot, um, super glued a, shoot, a mount on the top to take a microphone. Uh, this little microphone, the little Rode, whatever it is, I don't know what it's called, it is an excellent microphone and it will plug directly into the iPhone with an adapter and having the big wind fuzzy, uh, we won't get all that wind noise. So the video should be better for you guys. Um, and then the, the dongle, you know, all the stupid Apple stuff. Apple, Apple. Okay, so that takes care of the gadgets, uh, sunglasses and a pair of extra prescription glasses in the same case, isolated by their own bags, uh, i.e. cleaning cloths uh, so they don't get beat up and scratched. So I'll put a poll on there. Which watch do you think? The Tuna or the Explorer for the great adventure? It is an ex I, I'm not going to bias you. You, you, tell me, I'll put, you tell me the poll, which one you want. All right, let's move over to um, uh, the other other stuff, bikes, I guess. Okay, bike, emergency related stuff. So I've got a good quality, a tube. Of course, dirt bikes have 21 and 18 inch wheels. 21 in the front, 18 in the back. I'm only gonna take one tube because in a pinch you can put a 21 and an 18, but you can't put an 18 and a 21. I rub, run tubeless, so I rarely, I've never had a problem, but I'll take that just in case. Uh, Bic lighter, Fox 40 whistle, um, British lifeboat matches in just a little case there with the striker. Uh, those will lighten anything. A signaling mirror, which doubles as um, uh, helps you, you know, to put your put your makeup on, your cosmetics, or for me, put, putting uh, 
contacts in. You can use it for that. Uh, this is a, an LED. Uh, this is a light that I used on fires. This is a black diamond LED uh, headlamp. The headlamp, if you can only choose one, is a better bet because you, you can have, you don't have to handhold it if you're working on something at night. Your headlight goes out, you can, you can get by, right? Um, you don't have to hold it in your teeth. And an extra set of batteries. G26 with an extra magazine. Um, this is a 20 foot tubular webbing that can be used for a toe strap. Um, about probably 15 feet of Gorilla brand duct tape, a Park Tools hand pump, uh, tire pump, first aid kit from, this is the uh, AMP uh, from my friend, uh, friends over at AMP 3, uh, AMP 3, I, I forget, this is a basic kit, IFAT kit. Um, ear plugs, I, I'm going to be wearing those when I'm riding, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of noisy and it takes, just helps you stay fresh a little bit longer. I'm gonna take a, a Leatherman instead of a knife, uh, just the, the old school one, because I like the form factor of it. It's got pliers, cutters, knife, everything on it. I'm not gonna take a dedicated pocket knife. This is a spark plug holder, so an extra spark plug for two strokes. It's always a good idea in a protective case uh, so that it doesn't, the electrode doesn't get smashed and messed up, mess up the gap. Put that in there. And this is my extensive tool roll. This is the fatty tool roll from Moscow Moto. Uh, this has, uh, I would hate to lose this more than anything. It's the only thing that I own here in this deal that I have put my email on. It's like if someone finds it. <laughs> because it's taken years to d develop it and to build it. You know, so I've got the fasteners for my bike. I've got every tool to work on my bike. I've got the tire bars, the safety wire, the, the patch kits, you know, all that stuff. It all fits neatly into this tiny little roll. Um, and so that is all, that's all the tools um, that, I, that I should need. Here I'll be taking, I, I plan on eating out um, once a day and I only eat twice a day anyway, so I'm just gonna go freeze dried mountain house. So I'll probably eat one of those in the morning. Who knows what, you know, just, I, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna have five of these. So five days, five of these plus the eating out. And then to supplement that, I'll have uh, five cups of coffee. I use the Starbucks Vias because they're a the powdered coffee because they're convenient. You just boil some water and pour them in and they, they get the job done. So there's five of those in there, as well as a mix of uh, power bars, cliff bars sort of thing for emergency, right? MSR stove, uh, this is a small camp stove. Really love MSR stuff that will hook to these fuel bottles here. Um, so that will open up there and that's how I'll boil the water for coffee, as well as the freeze dried mountain house meals, right? They need to work on this case though. This is a bad, it makes me angry every time I like I'm, just, I'm just angry right now, trying to put it in there. Uh, three bottles, or three, three fuel canisters there. Uh, maybe I could probably get by with two. These are a little bit specialty. They're hard to find on the road. Um, and that is, yeah, that takes care of that. So let's move over to camping. Camping, yes, we will be camping. Um, that is the plan. So there's a couple of things I'm missing here. I'm missing my titanium cup, which Jack has, and I'm missing my big Agnes Thermarest which is the pad that goes under my sleeping bag that incorporates with my sleeping bag. So that he'll be home from camp today and I'll get that. So let's start here. So sleeping bag. So this is a big Agnes bag, of course, a non mummy bag. I'll, when we get on the road, I'll share my philosophy on that and why I hate mummy bags, a camp pillow. There's a couple luxury items. Actually, there's, there's three luxury items in here. Um, these little camp pillows are really, morale boosting. I remember being, I've been on wildland fires where two weeks into them when you're just, you're hating life. To be able to come back to your tent after a 14 hour day and have a little soft inflatable pillow with a soft fleece <laughs> to, to lay your head on is wonderful. These Sea to Summit pillows are amazing, amazingly comfortable in the perfect shape. And once they're deflated, I mean, they don't weigh anything and they fold up into, into just this little bag, just nothing. They're really great, really good for morale. Uh, so sleeping bag and the pillow, I'll pack those together. This is my tent. This is a, is this a quarter dome? This is an REI. This is, I bought this for my original dirt bike trek, trek 20 years ago. Still trucking. Uh, but this is a tiny, tiny tent. It, it's just the size of a sleeping bag, which you'll see when we get it set up. But what I have in here is I've got a ground mat, the poles, the stakes, the fly. I am going to take the fly. I debated taking the fly out and I very, and I still might. We'll see how it packs in. Because if I take the fly out, this bag will be half the size. Because this, actually the larger portion of it is the fly. Uh, and I don't expect rain. Luxury items. Well, camp chair. I mean, I just can't. There was a time when I didn't mind sitting on the ground. But anymore, no. 
I'm not an animal. I'm not gonna sit on the ground. It's uncomfortable. It's, it's just not very nice. So this is the lightest, most comfortable chair uh, out there, in my opinion. Of course, Big Agnes just, just is crushing. They've been crushing for years. They, they just make the best stuff. So this is a full-size chair. It's actually comfortable and folds up. So we'll see that on the trail as well. This is a bit of a luxury item as well, but I hate to go to sleep all dirty, right? Dirty and dusty. I don't sleep well. It gets your bedding all nasty and it just kind of ruins your trip. So this is a micro, a micro dry bath towel uh, that I use these on fires as well. And it's a full size towel, but it's a microfiber um, and it's really wonderful. So if you can just find a spigot or just go do take a bird bath in a creek or splash around or you know, hopefully we can find water nearby and to be able to dry off with a towel is nice. Um, so I'm gonna take that. I mean, you can use it for a blanket if, if, if you have to, if it really gets dire. And then of course, to round it out, these are uh, personal items. Um, my toilet uh, would be in here. I'll have a very, and no, that was not a jump cut. The camera was pulsing. I don't even know what we caught. So let's start over. Toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, Q-tips, contact lenses, uh, deodorant, uh, what I was saying, um, some paste sunscreen. I don't typically use it, but if, if it gets really bad. Um, some really fine pointed tweezers for pulling out slivers. I have an additional pair in my, in my first aid kit, but usually you'll have this in your tent with you and it's really nice to have a couple dedicated things. So I'll keep a couple band-aids in there and some like Tylenol aspirin. Um, some, you know, you go to bed and you might have a bad headache from being dehydrated or something and you don't want to go back and dig in your kit just to have a few things in here. Uh, and the, it, the best soap in the world. Man, I love this stuff. Dr. Bronner's peppermint hemp soap. Yeah, we're going full hippie on this, on this trip here. But this is great stuff um, for, for travel soap. Uh, shampoo, it's your soap shampoo, it's a whole deal in one, right? And then a, a big old huge like a baby wipe wet towel uh, in the bottom for a time if I can't get to water, uh, which I, I hope to. So you can kind of see the theme. I, I try to keep things organized. I had, see I had this all nice and then, and then everything's ruined now because I got to take it out and have the, because I'm always worried about talking too long in the video. So that rounds up the camping, the camping stuff there. My goodness, this looks like a lot of stuff. Uh, another thing that will be here, in addition to the gas bladder, the one gallon gas bladder, is, a wa in, is water filtration. And I'll share that with you uh, on the trail. So I, I didn't overlook that. Uh, okay, so actually everything from basically here over will be on me personally. So it looks, it looks like a lot of stuff. So the, I'll, separate, I'll separate the riding gear. So these, this is gonna be clothing. Um, so I'm gonna take a bandana when I ride. I, I always wear one around my neck. Um, off, it, Cause uh, if the sun is behind you and beating on you, I'll, I'll protect my, net, my neck uh, from the sun. And uh, I always wear it, it's just kind of a habit. Uh, the best socks presently that I've found to wear are, the, are from Darn Tough. Uh, they're, they're definitely my go-to socks. I don't buy anything else anymore. So I'm gonna take a wool socks, uh, tall socks, uh, to help with the knee braces, uh, I'm going to take one extra pair. My idea is hopefully we can, I can stop at water and I, and I can, you know, rinse stuff out if it gets too bad. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> I can just picture socks, you know, just flopping in the wind, hanging and drying. So that's what I plan on trying to wash things a little bit. So one extra pair of socks, one extra pair of knickers. Um, I'm going to take a Panago Patagonia down jacket. Um, I, we're gonna be pretty high. We're gonna be going up to 7,000 feet. If I get cold under my riding jacket, I can wear this, but mostly what I typically do, we'll put it on in the evening time uh, after the ride. Because I like to be comfortable after a day's work or a long day's ride. So what I'll do is I'll clean up and then I'll put um, uh, clean pants on and sleep, have clean, clean clothes to sleep in when you get into your tent and all of that. Uh, also uh, a very, this is my softest shirt. Uh, this is a, just a hundred percent cotton shirt. This is what I'll sleep in um, and then put on after I'm clean. Uh, Cause I, I just, I don't want to be all filthy. Uh, and then uh, this is a ultra, ultra lightweight mountain hardware beanie, just a fleece beanie. And I will be taking two t-shirts. These are the t-shirt. If you want to buy the best t-shirt that will change your life, um, the icebreaker, I don't know if it changed your life. Make it better though. The Icebreaker Merino Wool T-shirts. And people will say, well, wool is warm, right? I don't want to wear wool and I wear T-shirts in the summertime. It's cooler than cotton uh, because 
it, I don't know. I don't know what it is about wool, but it's an amazing fabric. You know, cotton, you can't wear cotton uh, when you're sweating and you're working. It gets wet, it gets clammy, and it won't dry out and it'll freeze you to death, especially when you're going from hot to cold. This doesn't do that. You can put it on, you can wear it in the summertime. It breathes very well. You can wear it in the wintertime. It's very, very warm. If it gets wet, it still has almost all of its insulating properties. Yeah, you're going to choke when you see the price. I have two of them. Um, just so Mrs. W doesn't have to do so much laundry, but that's what I'm going to be taking. This is what I, I, I am a huge, huge fan of these. My buddy Ray, that I dirt bike with, he wears them too. And he's like, there's just no, nothing else. That's all I'm going to buy from now on. Uh, okay, so I have two of those. I'll be wearing one and then one extra. I'm going to take a balaclava. These balaclavas, uh, Mrs. W found them. They're made by Mountain Hardware and they are the softest, most delicious fabric. Uh, they call them the butter, right? So if you're going to call a balaclava a butter, it needs to be comfortable, right? And they are. So I'll wear that. So if it gets really, really cold, I can wear that um, under the helmet. I'm going to take flip-flops, um, just the old school reef flip-flops for camp shoes. I want to be out of those dirt bike boots. I want to be my feet cooling off. Um, that's going to help with blisters and, and hot spots and all that. And yeah, they're not ideal, but I can't take the weight of like Chacos or Tevas. They're just too big and bulky, especially when you have great big size 12 feet like I do. So flip-flops. And then my, I've had these, what, 25 years? Just your regular basic uh, men's hiking, convertible hiking pants. Uh, what's cool about these is you get two in one, right? Because you can unzip them and then you have a pair of microfiber shorts that will dry really quickly if you want to go for a swim, right? Uh, or you can zip them on and you have full length pants and they're, they're all fleece lined on the inside and they just feel so good at the end of a tough day. Um, that's important that when you're really, when you're hurting, um, you know, I'm talking again about wildland firefighting, when you're hurting and you just, you know, you've been, you're just gr gr getting ground down to have something to look forward to at the end of the day, like a camp chair and, and a bath towel and some clean, soft, comfortable, dry clothes is it's, it's, it's immeasurable, the value. So that's it. That's all I'm taking for clothing. So I don't see, as far as the riding gear. Let's finish up and I'll show you the riding gear and then we'll be done. Now the riding gear I'm gonna be in for five days. It, I mean, j just like on a fire, you're gonna be in the same clothes. So um, that's uh, just the way it is. Uh, we'll start from the top down, helmet. So I'll be taking, I, I typically ride, when we, when we ride, uh, I wear mountain bike helmets, full face mountain bike helmets because I like the way they breathe so much better and they're lighter. And we, we don't ride fast, we ride slow technical stuff. So I don't, I never felt the need for a DOT approved helmet. But I'm gonna take a full face proper DOT helmet because of the speeds. Uh, we're gonna be more road riding and um, it's um, look, there's more protection. So we'll start with that. Uh, a jersey, just a standard uh, motorcycle jersey. I uh, should probably not choose, I usually, I choose a white helmet because they're so much cooler. Uh, and I probably should, I'm such a fan of Johnny Cash though, I just can't bring myself to bring to wear white jerseys or light gray. It would make more sense because it's so much cooler, but the black looks better, right? So, uh, and this is, our, this is our motorcycle club here, the Shamrocks. So if you, you get in our motorcycle club, you get one of these iron-ons. <laughs> so so uh, that was my, my contribution. Uh, jersey, uh, for a pack, I'm going to be keeping this ultra, ultra light. This is the Zach Speed. These are made in Australia or designed in Australia. And they're a really great dirt bike pack because they incorporate the chest protector right here. Uh, so you get everything all in one. So it, it, it's a very good system. Um, so the only thing I'm going to keep in there is water. Just, just simply water, maybe the water filter, because I don't want all that weight on my back. I'm going to put most of it on the bike, um, so that's that. Knee braces, you may or may not be familiar with these. Uh, some of the most common injuries on motorcycles is dabbing and put your foot down, hyperextending and blowing out your knee. Uh, these are, um, there's a lot of companies that make them, different ideas, but these are made by Liat, um, and they, they basically isolate your knee. Um, they're kind of a pain to fit, but once you get them all on there, uh, they're very good. So it won't let you hyperextend. You can see there, right there, you lock, it locks that out. Um, and they're also integrated knee protection. And I, I had a little hard time getting used to these riding with them, uh, but now um, I would feel naked without them. It would be like riding with no helmet. I I've, I've really uh, rely upon them. So I will be wearing the knee braces. Uh, I've got goggles, uh, clear. I was trying to decide whether I should go clear or tinted. I decided to go with clear um, and I put a new lens in, so start, starting fresh with that. Um, 
I, I'm going to go with the clear. I've got sunglasses there as well. I guess I could wear them if I have to, if it gets really bad. I'm going to be taking two pair of gloves. I always take two pair of gloves in case you were to go down or one to get wet uh, or just l lost. That's the thing you're going to lose the most. The thing that comes off all the time um, and what most guys lose on fires is um, gloves. Uh, you set them down or they fall off the bike and if you don't have them, you don't have them, right? So nice to have an extra pair, one if they get wet or if you just happen to lose them. And I keep those just on a carabiner here uh, as well. And then round, final, or finishing it up uh, will be riding boots um, and I wear CDs. These are Italian. These are the most comfortable riding boots I've ever worn. Um, They're excellent boots. They articulate well and I've never had my hurt, feet hurt in these. And I can't say the same for a lot of other guys. And you know, never know, is it the boot or not? But uh, that's not where you want to skimp uh, on shoe, on your boots. That's the, one of the most vulnerable spots um, as you're zinging by and stuff sticking up. With those, and to round that out, uh, are these are silk, basically like silk stockings. They're like a, like a sock with no foot in them. It's just an open tube. Um, and they're, they're silk because uh, they go right on your skin and that's what your knee braces go over. Because these knee braces, these are all carbon fiber and aluminum and, and there's a lot of rub points on them and they're moving all the time uh, and they'll rub blisters on you. So having these silk liners underneath of them um, make, makes everything move really nicely. And these get pretty stinky uh, and, and fouled. Uh, so I have two pair of those. So I'll be able to rinse one out and hopefully it'll dry in the sun. We'll see. I'm gonna take two pair because they're light and they don't weigh that much. Good grief, I forgot the riding jacket here. And finally, 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 how many times have I said that? An enduro jacket. This is, uh, I, I wore this yesterday for the first time. This is from, um, made by Moscow Moto, same company that makes my bags, local company here. Um, actually, the guy that designed this coat is a, an acquaintance of mine. He's the guy that actually I tried to kill with that Honda CRF that I ran into. <laughs> Remember that video? Uh, so when Honda brought, so he's the, he's the, when I whiskey throttled and I wheelied into him and took him out, that was the guy, he's the guy that actually designs the Moscow Moto stuff. So he had some really cool jackets and he was telling me that they were uh, gonna come out with some this, the, this year. And I just, I remembered that and I went on their website and they just, they, they, they have clothing, a clothing line now. And man, these are just the business. So this is an enduro specific jacket. Uh, it's gonna have a girdle, kind of a waist deal in the center. So you can uh, tighten it around your waist so you don't get air up it. It's cut a little bit longer. And the most important thing is it's cut to fit around uh, body armor. And I, I don't have my body armor here. I, I carry body armor, oh, and riding pants. They're outside drying. Uh, but it's, it's cut uh, in a certain way to fit, so you can have your body armor underneath of it, shoulder pads and elbows and all that. And then it's designed to be in that forward position. Like when I had leathers made back in the day by, um, there's a, the most famous leather making company in the Northwest is Langlitz. And I had two jackets made by them. They actually sit you on a mocked up motorcycle um, as with the, you know, the type of, that you would ride and then they measure you when they custom build your jackets for you. And so everything is fit to, uh, for the rider. And this is that way as well. Lots of ventilation. So it ventilates clear through the back, through the front, zip pits, the whole deal. It is really a nice jacket. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that out because it gets cold in the morning when you ride. So to be able to have this, I'll just roll it up, put it on the back when I'm not using it. In the, or wear it in the morning, and then in the evening time when it cools down, I'll, I'll put it on. So I'll be off and on with this all the time, and, and waterproof too. So that's gonna take care of it. So I have riding pants, uh, the jacket, body armor. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. One more, or two days to go, day and a half, and then we'll be rolling out. So the only thing left, help me decide which watch should we take. You non-watch people are gonna be like, are you joking? Does it really matter? Well, if you're a watch guy, you get it, right? <laughs> so should we take the Explorer or the, or the Tuna? Let me know. I'll do a little poll, and whatever you guys decide, that's the one that we'll take. Maybe. I can't decide myself. <laughs> so, if, that, if that's the worst decision I have to make, then I guess I'm in pretty good shape here. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.